Okay, so uh, this talk is going to be very interesting, uh, and it's ironically not about sex. <laughs> it's about something else. Because India is fantastic at sex, we produce the maximum number of people. Uh, we are the second highest populated country, We're going to produce babies and babies and babies. But it's about we killing our babies too. And that's exactly what this talk is going to be about. Uh, this talk is about asking you guys, what are we doing with our younger generation? What is it that you're trying to do with the people who are produced in India? Can you tell me the country? So we talk, we are number two in, the number of, in terms of population in the world, but we are number one at something. And we're number one at the number of suicides made in the world. So we are the country which tops the list in terms of suicides made. By the time this talk is going to get over, by the way, what's going to happen is 80 people in India would have committed a try to attempt suicide. Worldwide, 350 people would have tried to attempt suicide. Every four minutes, there is a person trying to commit suicide. You guys think HIV AIDS is important? Everybody talks about it. You think it's very important? You know what? There are two times more deaths happening out of suicides than against HIV, and nobody talks about it. Congratulations. All right? There's one thing more. There are 20 times more people attempting suicide in this nation than people affected by HIV. So only two times people actually die out of suicide, but 20 times more people attempt it. So it's like 40 times more important than HIV, but we have hoardings and posters talking about HIV. We do not talk about suicides in the country. In the last three years, I have met more than 50,000 people in the younger generation. And trust me, I have really seen that. I've seen that in my life. I have a crying chair in my office. And whoever comes to me for counseling invariably ends up crying in, this, in, his, in, the, in that chair. That's very interesting. I'll also tell you something more. So India is again very amazing because the world has an average suicide age of 65 years. So worldwide, people try to commit suicide when they're done with their life, and then they want to die. Do you know what age do people commit suicide in India? 15 to 29. Congratulations. We are killing our millennials. We're killing the best of the breed of the country. And I'll also tell you something. That majority of the people who commit suicide are literate, educated, and come from well-off families. All right? That's exactly what India is producing today. And what's the prime reason? And this is by the National Crime Records Bureau. What's the reason? Society and family pressures. Our society, we are killing the best of generations just because we don't know. I'll give you examples. I'll give you two very classic examples which just happened. So there was this mom whom I met yesterday. And she said that I'm really worried for my child's studies. And I'm going to actually have my blood pressure tablets coming on because from next year, my child's studies are going to go increase and become multifold. You know how old the child is? Six years. <laughs> right? That's exactly what's happening. Jaipur alone, last 15 days, three people have actually committed suicide in the Rajasthan University. That was there in the news yesterday. And we're not talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about it because it's a taboo. We really don't want to talk about it. If you talk about it, you're anyway mentally ill. Right? You can't talk about it. And this is for all the feminists, right? And all those who support that females are the sufferers, right? Understand that the number of men committing suicide in the world is twice that of females. And men can't even talk about it. Right? Because if they do, seriously, if they do, they are not men anymore. We are not supporting. They, they actually are living in the shell because they're not supposed to speak about it. And that's exactly what we are trying to do with our people. And I'm really sad to see that. I'll also tell you the problem. So what's going on? What's going on and what's actually perpetrating the whole story of suicides in the country? This is something which is happening. You are really special. That's exactly what we tell our kids the day they are born. I've seen moms coming and telling me and telling the kids, you're the best child I have. You're the only child also I have. <laughs> so, 
So what you are trying to do, you're trying to tell that child, you are the best, you are amazing. You're going to the school and actually give him awards and awards and awards because every child is born special. You know what? I tried to attempt suicide three times. And I used to think I'm a big man, right? I've tried three times. You know what? When I actually see this, I am no longer special. I should have attempted at least 20 times to actually die. Right? So you actually, the, the ratio is, if you attempt 20 times, then you die once. So, so for me to die, I had to actually try 20 times. And that's what makes me special. Till all other times, I am not special. I keep telling, I keep seeing this happening around me. Everybody's telling, you are special, you are special, you are special. By 15, you are just the most special child. And then suddenly, you come to a competitive world where you're sitting for an IIT exam, and you realize, you are just not special anymore. Right? It's so amazing. It's every single competition in the country, the success rate is only 1 to 2 percent. 98 percent people fail that competition. 125 billion people living. Wow, fantastic. 125 crore people living in this country. And that's why nothing, nothing makes you special. You are just another person. Start accepting that. And then this is amazing. Okay? We actually start creating biases. We start creating, we put people into, you are a boy, you're not supposed to cry. And you're a girl, you're supposed to cry. Right? That's exactly what we do. And if you're confused, you're LGBT. That's exactly what you are. You cannot actually understand. A three-year-old kid understands that he has to, a boy has to live in a blue room and a girl has to live in a pink room. I don't know why. We are creating that. We are creating that gender bias. And that's exactly when a boy tries to shake hands with a girl, he's trembling. I've had this. Right? Because I don't know how to react. Right? Because she's a girl, I'm a boy. Right? I don't have any differentiations. And if I'm somewhere in the middle, I'm gone. Right? It's a completely deadly story for me. <laughs> Crazy. And that's exactly what we end up creating with gender bias in this nation. And then I hate that Sharma uncle ki daughter and Sharma uncle ka beta. <laughs> Because they are the ones who are actually killing the society. Sharma uncle's son is doing this. Why are you not doing this? I don't care about Sharma uncle. I care about me, man. I want to talk about me. Please don't tell me about Sharma uncle because he's doing it. I don't really want to do this. I have been on the other side of the battle, honestly, because I was one of the top of kind materials. So all the other people would go and tell the kids, be like this guy. And those all people would hate me because I was doing good. Imagine. Now, doing good is bad, and doing bad is anyway bad. Right? So where should somebody go? And then you're completely confined into a room, and you say, oh, my life is over. And that's exactly what the problem is. You have to start thinking. No comparisons. Yes, this way, you're different. You're not special, please. Right? There's a difference. You're not supposed to build that ego and say, I am the best in the world. You're not the best. There is somebody better than you every single time. Be humble. Be modest. But yes, you're born different. There is something within you which actually defines you as an individual. Right? Just be that. And then, this is this amazing sense of instant gratification which we have produced in this country. So what you do is, everything comes with a snap of a finger. You don't know anything, go to Google, you get it. Right? You don't know the pronunciation, type. You don't know which place to go, type. Do whatever, everything is available. I know people in this country and across the world who actually wait for the whole series to get over, and then they have the whole bunch, and then they would actually watch it because instant gratification. I can't wait. Right? Instant gratification. I always want it. I want it the time I want it. You say, Mom, I want this thing. Mom would get you. You want Dad, I want this. You get it. If that's what is happening, we have lost the whole control of not getting things. And then when you see 98% plus people failing in majority of the exams, you do not get it. And that's the time when you realize, oh, I was getting it, getting it, getting it, getting it without any work. Today, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm just not getting it. Right? And then, this is the most amazing. I'll tell you something which happened uh, just about a week back. I was seeing one couple fighting, right? And there was this honeymoon couple who was fighting and looking at each other, whatever, whatever. And then suddenly, this uh, girl had an idea. Let's do a selfie. Suddenly, both of them started smiling. Click. Fantastic. <laughs> amazing. You go to Facebook. Everybody is happy in this world, man. Right? Nobody is sad. Nobody talks about being sad. I have not seen, and if you post that you are sad, then you're anyway out of the world. You're a, you're a crazy nut, you're a mental fellow who does not understand how to live in this world actually. 
right? And if that's what we're trying to do, we are creating a fake social identity and we don't know what we are. We are a person who's supposed to smile because we are on selfie, we are on camera, and then we go back home and say, where to cry? On whose shoulder do I cry? I have nobody because I'm telling the world I'm doing rocking, my life is rocking, but my life is actually not rocking. Right? And I meet these people every single day of my life, 50,000 people. I am not a counselor, I am just a regular finance professional. People come to me for career advice, I ended up giving, end up giving them life advice because that's what is important in my life. Right? And that's exactly what I've tried to resolve now. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. My objective in life is try to help as many people, your age, all educated people, to please start living a good life. I tried to attempt suicide three times. I don't want you to do it ever. Right? That's exactly what, what I would do. I have my own story, which is different, but let's talk about solving the problem. The first problem and the first solution, please do not shy of taking help. It's okay to take help. You know what? I've seen places and I've seen people. So there was this mother in Delhi who was actually, her, her daughter was struggling with mental pressure. And they could not take her to a doctor in the compound because so society would know that she's actually having a mental disorder. Boss, that's out of question. If you go to a counselor, you're already declared mentally ill. And trust me, 80% people have mental anxieties available every single point of time. I can guarantee every single person in this room has had problems and you had nobody to go to, right? Your parents would say, you are anyway the best, right? And somebody else would probably say, you are the worst. There's nobody to really tell you the right thing in this world. There is somebody who's there, who's knowledgeable, sensible, been through the whole thing. Please take help from that person. That's very, very important. If you're not willing to take help, you will not get it. Just, it's okay. It's your life. Actually live it. Because if you can't live it, you're the one who's going to die, no? Right? So what's the point of actually not living at all? Just go, take out help. It's absolutely all right. Just let that happen. And this is the best. You know what? I love failures. I have lived through a life of failures. I've enjoyed failures in my life. And failures are the best teachers in this world. We are taught not to fail. I'll tell you, I love every single student who fails. And fail early, fail fast, and fail often. The more you fail, the better you'll do in your life. I guarantee that. You know, When I returned back from London, and I came back, I retired, and I came back to Jaipur, I started my business, and I lost a lot of money. And everybody told me that, you know, you are the biggest fool on this earth, right? And I was really struggling with my life. I was really thinking, what have I done? I was also going through a medical process. I was in bed for nine months, lost business, lost my career, and I was really struggling. And then things started happening. And when things started happening, things started happening fantastically well. Today, I happen to have a lot of people liking me, right? I'm, this is my third TED Talk now, right? And if that's my third TED Talk, the same people who would come and tell me, you are a failure, they come and tell me, this is the best decision that you could take in your life. Right? Failures are fantastic. It's absolutely all right to fail. Fail, fail, fail. The more you fail, the faster you fail, the better you will do is my promise to you guys. And then, I have a question, and that's a very interesting question. How many of you know the best pediatrician in the world? Who is the best pediatrician in India? Congratulations. Who is the best gynecologist? Nobody, okay. Who is the best uh, coder in the country? Best coder in the world? Congratulations, you guys don't know it. I'll tell you what. Who's the best actor? Who's the best actress? Who's the best author? Who's the most famous politician? Who's the best singer? Who's the best writer? We all know, right? I can see all happy, smiling faces around. And then we are pushing our child to be a pediatrician, to be a gynecologist, to be a coder, to not become popular. Why? Be somebody who's known. So rather tell your kids, tell yourself to be a painter, to be an artist, to be an alternate career guy, to rock your life. Right? Do something amazing with your life. Right? That's exactly what you have to start doing. Don't worry about, oh, I have to become an engineer. And do what? And actually get lost in this whole world. You'd rather be a politician and probably shine and rock like a rock star. Right? It's a great option. Actually, let do that. Do that for everybody that you know in your life. Please allow alternate careers in this world. And then, 
have patience. I'll give you a very classic example of this. Entrepreneurs are amazing. I love entrepreneurs. I'll tell you why. I took a retirement decision at the age of 30, 32, and I thought, oh, five years of struggle, and that's going to be very difficult for me. Five years of struggle, fantastic. Now imagine, a regular employee will work till what age? 60 years? You know what? Till what age I'll work? At least 75? Unless something happens to me? I get 15 years extra. 10 years net. Patience. And it's actually good to be rich at an old age rather than being rich early. Right? When you're old, then you need all the nurses around you. <laughs> and you want to live a good life. And that's exactly what you want. Be patient. Be nice. Be humble. Be polite. And then, please know the people who care for you. Just go to them. If you're really struggling, just understand. There are only three, four, five people in this world who will care for you. Number one, parents. I applaud to all the, all the parents who actually take care of us. I really respect them. I love them. They are the only ones who love you irrespective of anything that you do in this world, okay? Your brothers and sisters, unless you quarrel with them, so be nice to them. Your best friend, one or two maximum, trust me. And there's one more, your mentors and teachers, right? Trust me, their success depends on your success. And if their success depends on your success, they'll always wish good for you. Everybody else is not there to wish good for you. Don't go to anybody else. Right? If you are in any trouble in this world, go to these five people, that's about it. They'll be the people who will be there to support you, help you, guide you at every single point in time. And, this is my last. Please understand, we are not human resources. We are humans. Stop calling people human resources. Right? We are not machines. That's exactly what a company does. They say, you are a human resource. I am not a resource. I'm an individual who has a life, who wants to live, who wants to do something great in this world. I'm an individual. Start spreading the message of love, please. Start helping people. The moment you help somebody, the help will come back to you. People will love you back. Give to give back. Get back. And I think that's the only message I'm going to end with. Thank you so much. Please.